I'm back. <clears throat> I thought I'd uh, just do a little update vlog. It's been a while since I've uh, put anything on YouTube, so um, oh yeah, thought I'd make a little vlog. Um, kind of just go through what I've been up to, where things are at. I haven't really posted anything other than just track day videos um, for the last few months. Just been too busy. Haven't really had the uh, the enthusiasm to do it. Neighbour there waving away. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd uh, have a little update as to what I've been doing, what's been going on with the car, what are the plans for the car, what are the plans for the um, space that I've been using, which is like a big update really on where things have been going, where all my time's been going. Um, hmm, yeah, so I might as well, I'll flip you around to the Cayman. Tell you what's been going on with this. So, as you know, I've wait. Unless you don't know, I've done a few track days this year. Cars run pretty, uh, pretty great, really. Every day's been nice and hot, so conditions have been good. Cars run spot on up until the last day, which I did have a little bit of a uh, bother with. Um, which was I was getting a bit of coolant coming out the bottom of the car. I was getting a bit of uh, oil seepage as well. Uh, that turned out to be, I'm not sure you're here yet. So we were getting some weeping on the car. I don't know how well this will show. Um, but yeah, this uh, coolant transfer pipe sits on this side of the engine, just behind the seats. Uh, and when I had the car jacked up, the amount of coolant that was coming out was enough that it would need topping up but not enough that it wasn't stopping us from running the car but underneath the car so if i flip this over you can see it transfers i don't know which direction it would be but from up here down and out i believe it would be down and out this way water temp sensor goes in here but the uh the weeping from underneath the car was literally coming out of this bolt so at the time i was suspecting that this had potentially cracked just just because of the age but uh once i got it out there was like the o-ring that sits in there was literally like a little nick in it towards this corner how the nick had appeared i don't quite know maybe it's the uh the age of the rubber in there i guess if it's being held up against it any engine vibration has maybe caused the split in it but yeah, what a cue on that was because uh, the way it sits in, the uh, the engine mount at the front, rather than just being able to get to it, this bottom piece kind of loops through. So it meant taking all the engine mount off the bottom to be able to get it out. And some of these bolts as well were just an absolute nightmare to get to. So a type of thing that I could film, but usually when I'm on uh, doing the job, I just... Yeah, I don't have it in us to deal with the frustration of getting to bolts while filming stuff at the same time. It would be handy to uh, just have someone filming us. So that was replaced on the car from the last track day. Um, and then there was some weepage from the tandem oil pump, which kind of sits. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, show you actually. Seat's still in at the minute. Yeah, let's see if I can get to it. The uh, tandem oil pump sits down. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. It's, yeah, it's kind of like there. Tucked out of the way, there was some oil seepage there. But it turns out it was actually a crankcase breather pipe up the top that had popped off. Uh, that was reconnected. That was reconnected on the car. Um, well, it was reconnected on the car. I've had to put some uh, cable ties on it just to uh, secure it down because I don't know if it's maybe crankcase pressure that made it blow off. Something I'm going to have to keep an eye on. But other than that, hopefully going forward, that's all the little issues sorted with the car. Um, so... Yeah, issue sorted. Anything else as far as work with a car? We've just sorted out a centre radiator. 
that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be the shroud and stuff to change on that. We're going to put the smile vent in. We've had the uh, cut out template for a little while to stick on so we can get that on. Um, other than that, I don't think we're going to paint the uh, inside engine cover that faces the back of the seats because we've stripped the back of that out now. Or the cap, it was behind the seats. So the uh, rear engine cover's already been powder coated. We put some black bolts and stuff in, so we're going to do that one to match. Um, oh, I had a bit of an issue with this actually. Um, let me show you. So this piece of trim goes. Oh, I'm dropping the bolts here. Where did that other one go? I'll get in a second. So the trim goes here and the car isn't that low but what I'm finding on the track under certain corners is this must be managing to touch the floor which is actually ripping the front ripping the front of that out so it's popped out it's happened a couple of times now and I've already trimmed the bottom of it by about 10 mil so yeah I was quite surprised with that considering I'd uh, put stiffer springs on it front and back I thought that would take a lot of bounce out of the car but there's still enough there in order for that to touch and at Croft it was always the, going into the first corner clipping the curb and obviously as it's then catching that must be there that was a point that I would always hear the same noise and whenever I heard that noise that's when that bit of trim was popped out so We've got to uh, have a bit of a play about with that and see if there's a more secure way we're going to attach it. Uh, yeah, there's. I think that's it for the car, really. There's nothing major that we're going to do. Um, still planning to turbo it. Whether or not we get an engine rebuild beforehand, we're still looking at engine swaps. So, But it's not massively needed at the minute. It's nice just to actually be using the car and having some fun in it and getting some seat time. So... There's no major undertakings to be done when we've got track time booked for next year. And we'll probably just see how it goes. If there's anything major that happens, you know, that might instigate something to happen. But up until then, we'll just, yeah, see how it goes. Um, so in here, obviously a lot of people have mentioned how, uh, how tight it is in here. It's just a normal sized garage. I've tried to make the... Uh, the most of it out of the space but you can see over time just collecting parts even uh the attic space is literally filled full of car interior and random bits of just crap over the years um so as i've begun to run out of space and obviously you're trying to do jobs now on the car i was struggling more and more and more so the plan was to build some more space so we'll come back in here in a second but i'll show you what i've been up to over the last couple of months so this is what i've been building it was a complete mess when i got it if you've got it on instagram you'll have seen the state of it. But this, I don't know if I can get out uh, far enough. I'll try and set the uh, <coughs> the brightness so we're not in and out because of the lights. But well, yeah, we've been uh, the last few months, wait, over the last year really, I put the this work, this shed up um, over a year ago and it just needed so much work. It was really dilapidated. So it's, it's just had so much done to it and doing everything pretty much by myself. Um, yeah, it's been trying to find the time, trying to find the time to do it. Just with, you know, any commitments, your full-time job, trying to keep your house tidy, trying to spend some time with your significant other, all these sorts of things. There's only 24 hours in the day going to the gym, just, yeah, stuff adds up. So trying to just get an hour here and there to slowly chip away um, to keep the cost of it down, really. 
Um, it's one of those ones you can chuck money at it, get other people to come in, but I just didn't want to increase the budget of it. You look at people building workshops where they're spending you know, 10,000 plus pounds on it, just didn't want to do it. That money I could spend elsewhere, track time, car repairs, holidays, other things. So I tried to do literally as much of it myself as I could, um, which was pretty much everything by the uh, the plastering. I got my stepdad in to help us with the plastering. I did help him. I did have a go. I ended up doing, uh, I think I got about this segment of wall done and the back and uh, up above here at the back and I think it was like one side of here as well. But he's been plastering for years. So actually he did, if I remember rightly, uh, what did he do the first day? I think he did the, yeah, he did the the sailing the first day while I was at work because my days off are Monday, Sunday or Monday. So he came on the Saturday, he did the roof. Um, and then on the Sunday, we literally cracked the rest off. And as you can see, he did way more than me on that second day. Oh, that wall, that wall, that wall. All of this, like, just absolutely stains on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, work prior to it was... Uh, Stiffening it all up so I had an extra bit of joists into there, bits to support it. And then we did all of the... Uh, all of the insulation was put in, plasterboarded out, then the plastering, and then painting, skirting, so all the bits of joinery and stuff to do all the trims around the window. But even the windows to start with, like this used to be four windows. Um, I just thought it would look a little bit cleaner, just being the two. Uh, yeah, so trying to do all these little bits and bobs just to ultimately end up with this bit of space that would be just a bit nicer to work in. You know, you can't always... I have done stuff on the kitchen table. As you can imagine, that doesn't always go down um, as good as you'd want it to. But yeah, you do what you have to do to get things done. But yeah, to have this space now is going to be a godsend, really. Uh, the plan is... I keep on going over like different layouts. Uh, just you're trying to think of all the little jobs you'd want to do. Um, so the space that you'd want to do it, how things are going to be used. So when we go back into the garage, you'll see the eventual plan is to put a set of French doors on the back of the garage, which will open out over. Obviously these doors open in over. So that space is going to go straight through into the garage. So hopefully just access back and forth will be much easier. So this will be the space to store tools and that will literally just be for the car. Um, so then trying to lay everything out in here. Um, the plan is to get a scissor lift, small scissor lift in the garage. And that needs, if I remember right, it needs electricity and it needs an airline supply. So we're gonna have to have electrics Ran into here because at the minute there's no electrics. I've just run it in from an extension lead from the living room. Um, electrics fed in, but an airline running from here back into the garage that will obviously power the scissor lift. But in here, um, yeah, have the airlines in for whatever I need them for. Um, so yeah, trying to think, will the uh, compressor be suited to a corner? either corner where the airline can run straight in, but it's still accessible in here, like add a longish air hose on, on a reel. Um, we're gonna do, the plan is, I think workbench wise, to do something right along the back of there. I've still got two lengths of uh, board that I've cut down, that kind of worktop depth, and they're pretty long and it literally covers from that corner to that corner, back right up, ending at the end of the window. So do steel framed, maybe do some kind of uh, frame up the back to do some pegboards to be able to store tools up there. That's kind of the thing. I know it's like one of my things, I've had this uh, this press for a little while now, obviously doing wheel bearings and whatnot, putting bushings in, is that every time I'm using it, I'm always being on the garage, garage floor out there, have to pull the car out, have to clear everything from around it. But uh, I never realised how tall it was. And thinking it would be fine whenever you see one in a workshop, but obviously by the time that's on a workbench, 
it's got to be pushing it so I think it's gonna have to be kind of put in the middle in the middle of here so whether or not it can be stored in such a way I can have it underneath the workbench when I'm not using it and then lift it on top when it needs using rather than just have it up right in the middle of the workbench the whole time but they'll be along here um, so we'll see obviously the air compressor is going to go down there um, yeah there's all sorts it'd be good to finally uh, start using my TIG welder that I got from Artec at the beginning of the lockdown actually that was uh, always wanted to start TIG welding I did do a bit um, I had a friend helping us start to learn I was picking it up pretty good was enjoying it enjoying the process it was something new to learn but uh, again with the garage all the time I was having to take the car out set everything up uh, set everything up do my bit of practicing welding and then I'll have to clean stuff up, put stuff away, put the car and it just becomes a lengthy process when it's something that you're learning. I tend to find you just, you want to be able to jump on, do your bit, that's it. Like, you know, as little messing about as possible. And literally every job with the car in there becomes that of like wheeling and out. And if you put it up on, say like now when the weather isn't great and the light doesn't last anywhere near as long, lifting the car up and putting it on stands in the garage, then it becomes that immovable object. So everything you're trying to do becomes trying to shuffle down the side of the car. So we'll uh, tell you what, we'll go back out to the garage and we'll uh, see if we can wrap things up. Don't want to make this too long, too boring. Probably waffled on enough as it is. Oh. So. So yeah, plans within here. Obviously, like I said, there's already stuff here. Obviously, all details just is literally just absolutely loads of crap. Everything's crammed in. Stuff piled on top of each other. So when you're trying to find stuff, it's a nightmare. More car stuff, interior bits that need to go up into the loft. Uh, like old. There's just loads of, loads of crap up there. Um, so the plan is, is to French doors on the back of here get rid of this uh, up and over garage door do a roller one because then I should gain a good sort of six inches or so on either side of the door so that'll make getting in and out easier that's always a chew on it's so tight trying to line the car up to push it in and out because it's literally pointless starting it so up and over garage door that'll clear that so if the lift's in we'll be able to get it a bit higher i kind of measured judging on the height of the car obviously we'll get rid of the uh tube up here and we'll just go for some leds similar to the garage but that should get us a decent enough height on the car we're getting in and out from underneath it easy enough obviously it won't be standing underneath it but enough to just make it a touch easier higher than it would be on jack stands and much much quicker which is uh yeah i suppose it's just a luxury isn't it if you can get them in so the scissor lift that i've seen well the plan is try and uh yeah get it lined up and we'll get it cut and flushed in the floor and then we'll uh yeah do in here i think so it matches like the garage so maybe uh we'll plasterboard the ceiling the walls, I've seen some, uh, you can get like LED channeling to go into the plasterboard so the LED lines are flush. So I've been playing about with ideas. I've been thinking about like two lines at the top and a line at the bottom. Keep this one white. So it'll give similar light off to like what's there now. It'll just be clean and set in the wall. And then the one up above maybe is do red. And then it'll obviously have the ceiling lights there as well which will uh, be plenty of light down on the car. So I think that would be pretty cool. Maybe just finish it off with some uh, some nice tiles. Just black and red ones, I think, will go pretty good. But yeah, need all of this stuff out to uh, get it cleared up. That needs to be all organized, put into the, into the workshop. I've actually got a bit of worktop here that I could have used. I think I'm just gonna give that away it's been sat there for a while but yeah the car been uh, pretty good this year actually really enjoyed it got to meet like 
uh, quite a few people, made some new friends. Um, yeah, it's interesting stuff, just getting to see what other people are up to. Um, jumping in other people's cars, them jumping in mine, getting them, you know, feedback on how it goes. And it, it's nice to sort of do work to it and then sort of see how it, like how those little changes make a difference. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time on your cars and not getting to use them due to various reasons, like I've said before, but um, this year was good. I managed to get a decent bit of seat time and next year is looking like we should get someone. We're going to go to some different tracks. We've got Cadwell, Alton Park, Donington, uh, Spa and the Ring already sorted, booked. So really looking forward to doing them in the car. Uh, yeah, so interested. See where it goes. See uh, how quickly trying to... Uh, Trying to get all this work done, you know, just uh, but don't try and rush things, just kind of take it as they come. Try not to add too much stress to your uh, everyday life. But hopefully over the, uh, we've got now until, now until March, until the first track day. Oh, I didn't even mention actually, we, uh, I, uh, we, uh, got a tow vehicle. So the plan is with that to where uh, we were going to buy a trailer. Um, but I think for next year with the dates that we've got booked, we're actually going to hire one for those events and use it, see how much, like, see how it goes. Um, see if it'll be worthwhile purchasing one over just hiring it. Because then if we buy one, there'll be the cost of storing it. Because, hey, yeah, we literally don't want it. It'd be good to be able to put it out the front of the drive. But, yeah, we don't have the space. Um don't really want to rely on putting it at a family's drive and having it sat there. So we'll see how it goes. We'll rent one, use that. Uh, that car's been awesome, really. Um, it should make it a bit easier, especially when it comes to doing Spa and the Ring next year. Having the, because that's always been my, like, I've only done Croft this year. And part of the reason was, was just like that niggling thing in the back of your head. If you go somewhere, have your day if something happens trying to organize getting the car back home it would just be a chew um, so this way with the trailer there's no dramas uh, especially with the ring and spa chuck it on the trailer go and have your phone if for some reason the car has a fault is undrivable chuck it on the back of the trailer and that's it you, you know you're still getting home there's you're not going to incur all of the costs of trying to get that thing back and yeah it alleviates a lot of stress uh, is this uh, oh, I didn't have already dad tap the uh, stop button there we're almost done um, so that's all sorted we're looking forward to that I can't think of too much else now yeah we're just gonna see how it goes get in the next year um, try and do these things we've got those jobs we've got bits to do in the workshop um, yeah we'll get to it if you've got any feedback um i don't know if you've uh passenger rides with cars i know there's a there's a few people that i've met this year that follow us um so we've got stuff arranged with them um but if there's a the trial put date up in the in the description of track days we're doing if you fancy a chat just pop over uh it's quite good to uh just get chatting with people but yeah i don't i keep i'm just i'm baffling here aren't i i'll leave it there Plans ahead. I'll try and do some more videos if I can. Um, if you have any, that, that's what I was going to say. If you have any suggestions, you know, as far as like the layout and stuff in the workshop, any ideas, because that's my biggest thing. Like even though like, you notice that I didn't have the electrics in there, I didn't, didn't want to pre-plan too much because it's hard. I hate doing stuff, getting somewhere and then realizing that yeah, you just didn't think of that one thing that would have been ideal of just putting something in the right place. So maybe something that I've overlooked or something that would be useful to have in a certain place. Any type of feedback like that um, would be appreciated. Other than that, um, I'll next time I do another video, see you later.